Jeannie Summer Hayes. I'm with the Department of Ecology. And I'm our regional director out of our Bellevue office. So Whatcom County, Bellingham are within my region. And what goes on up here, including this project, are very important to me. And I want to say, first of all, that I am very grateful and happy to see all of you here wanting to learn about how to participate in this process effectively. So as Jane said, I'm going to be covering I'm calling it NEPA SEPA 101. We could spend all day, a whole day class, on NEPA SEPA, but I'm going to have three short slides on it. Then I'll talk about what the steps are in the process related to this project, where we're at in the pro process, and very importantly, the scoping process and how you can effectively participate and, be, and get your information to us, the agencies, the co-lead agencies, to factor in for the development of the environmental impact statement. So we'll go ahead uh, with what I'm calling NEPA SEPA 101. Now I know there are people that are very knowledgeable about all this, but I know there are many people who some of this is new. So I'm going to start with some basic information. So NEPA is the National Environmental Policy Act. It came about in 1969. Following that for the state is the State Environmental Policy Act in 1971, and it was modeled after NEPA. Both sets of these uh, set environmental policy and agency responsibilities to protect the environment. It's really surprising to look back and see that there were not a set of requirements that looked holistically on the environmental impacts of a project. Uh, it was really groundbreaking uh, a policy and regulatory work. What does it do? The bottom line is it ensures the environment is considered before decisions are made on a project. At the end of the process, you will have a document, the Environmental Impact Statement. Some of you have seen EISs, some of you may have not, but it's a comprehensive document that will provide an impartial discussion of first, the probable significant impacts of a proposal. Reasonable project alternatives, and this includes the no action alternative, which I will talk about a little bit more, but that's very important to note. And what measures could be taken to avoid, first of all, or minimize the impacts of the proposal? So the key aspects that come out of NEPA SEPA is a document that's going to inform the agencies, decision makers, and we should have had the word in this line, the public in terms of the significant impacts of a proposal. You should have something that you can look at and go, this is a comprehensive list of what the impacts could be associated with the project. Addresses regulatory gaps. Prior to NEPA and SEPA, we had various permits. A number of agencies are represented here. My agency is here. We issue permits, and they may tie in with a specific issue, like wetlands or stormwater. But there were still gaps that were not being caught and not being analyzed in some sort of comprehensive review. And that's what SEPA and NEPA provided. And very importantly, the impacts are identified early. Sometimes before, it wasn't until we got to the permit stage, which was later in the game, months, perhaps years later, that you are trying to identify what the impacts are of a project through the permit process. In terms of the agencies, SEPA applies, the State Environmental Policy Act, to Washington state agencies and local public agencies, like Whatcom County here. NEPA applies to the federal agencies and the tribes. And you'll be hearing from the federal agency here with the core, with Randall Perry uh, during our panel. And what comes out of this process for the agencies is that it infor informs us about the environmental consequences before we make the permit decisions. So we as agencies that are issuing the permits rely tremendously on this foundational document, the EIS. 